We have multiple new sets on the horizon. We got 2024 Topps Chrome already out. Pro debut a week from today. And multiple other sets like Stadium Club, High Number, Allen and Ginter, Update, you can name it. And Target has made a pretty, a pretty bad retail sports car change. So what's going on, guys? It's Grip and Rip. And before we get into that, let's talk about the giveaway. So at 10,000 subscribers, we are giving away hobby packs of the newest product available at that time. All you got to do is be subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content at hand, and last but not least, leave a comment in the comment section of this video and countless other videos on what has been your favorite moment so far this baseball season. And I will pick the winner once we hit the coveted 10,000 subscribers. So there's that. So let's get into it. So... Of course, today, well, when you're watching this, it's Wednesday, but yesterday, Tuesday, when I'm recording this, I was like, you know what? I'm pretty bored. It's pretty rainy. I really didn't feel like sitting in the house. I know it's kind of strange, but I was like, you know what? Let's go for a little ride, right? A lot of new stuff, like toy, like action figure-wise, is hitting stores right now. So I was like, you know what? Let's see if we could find, you know... The, the, you know, the things I'm looking for, like WWE stuff and Marvel stuff and things like that. Let's go to Target. Let's go to Target. Target is the place to be right now for action figures, at least. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go. You know, nothing to do today. I'm bored. I don't feel like sitting in the house. Let's go, right? So, of course, you know, the first thing I do always, always, always is look at the sports card section. Because, obviously, the sports card section is right when you walk into the store. At least in my stores. I know some stores, actually, believe it or not. Um, some stores have been remodeling. Um, like Targets, I'm talking about. And Walmarts, actually, as a matter of fact. Um, some Targets are actually starting to put their sports card section by the Funko Pops in the back of the store. i actually seen that. Um, about two weeks ago or so at a newly like remodeled in progress target. Uh, so yeah, so basically if you see the sports cards moved one day, um, which, you know, we're going to be talking about that actually in this video quite a lot, but, um, if you see the sports cards, not in the normal aisle one day, go look in the back of the store by the electronics and the Funko pops. If you know what Funko pops are and they will actually be there most likely because I seen my one target did that. And I assume a lot of others as well are going to do that but that's not the point of the video so i have a buddy who um works at this one target i am at so it's funny we actually became friends just by talking over sports cards it's funny he works in the exact same register every single time i'm there if he's working when i'm there he's always at the exact same register that is right next to the sports card aisle and he sees me, he's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, yeah, I'm looking for, you know, I just said Chrome because obviously Chrome, you know, is the newest stuff. I really wasn't looking for cards. I was just trying to spark a conversation because I noticed something. I noticed something pretty glaring and very bad, which is going to be the thumbnail of this video. So the thumbnail is a real picture I took of this sports card section. I noticed all of the cards were gone. Now, this sports card section in this particular target, from the Pokemon and sports cards combined, is about a solid, I would say, 10 to 12 feet. Pretty, pretty big sports card aisle, um, all things considered. Compared to Walmart, at least. Walmart, I'll tell you one thing. My Walmart sports card aisle is like a foot long. I kid you not. Out of all of the space my Walmart sports card aisle has, it's like 95% Pokemon and like 5% sports cards. Absolutely, I am not kidding you. I haven't seen a sports card restock at my Target, or I should say Walmart, in like months. I kid you not. There has not been Chrome there yet. I haven't even seen Series 2 or Platinum Chrome or Bowman at my regular like home base Walmart, which is insane to think about. But that's for another day. 
I noticed at this particular Target that the sports cards were pretty much all gone. Now, what's concerning to me, um, what caught me right off guard immediately was the fact that this is the Target. If you watch my channel, you know I talk about a Target all the time here on the channel. That there is one Target that is just filled to the gills of, of sports cards. Like, there is no shelf space or nothing for anything at this one Target. That is the exact same Target I am talking about today in this video. All the sports cards except these Caitlin Clark like Iowa State or wherever college he played from, like blaster boxes, which there was like, I would say like 10 to 12 of them. I don't know. I didn't count them. But yeah, yikes. So what I did was, again, I sparked the conversation with my buddy who is a cash register at this, or cashier, I should say, at this um, Target. And I was like, what, what happened to the sports cards? Because I was just at this Target like, literally four days prior to this, it was filled. It was filled up and down, like, everything you want. And a couple days later, it was just, like, empty. And I said to myself, there's no way this is actually legit. Like, nobody would have just waltzed in here to buy all these boxes, and the shelves are, are bare. So I said to him, I was like, what happened to the sports cards? And I said, I was just here a couple days ago and it was all filled. Now it's all gone. And he said, guess what he said? The vendor took them out of the store. And the aisle for the sports cards is significantly, significantly smaller. It's about, I would say, two to three feet compared to at least five to seven feet a couple days ago. And guess what was put in those extra feet of shelf space? More Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever the hell else that I don't collect. Magic the Gathering, I think it's one of them. I don't know. The Disney cards, whatever. So, yeah yikes to say the least so after i was done with that target i actually found some action figures i was actually looking for so it was a pretty successful trip i went to another target about 10 to 12 minutes down the road and again that section is pretty much almost identical now there was not an overflow at this target this other target i go to is pretty tame on the restocks um, it's not like overflowing like the other Target I was just talking about was. But still, I go there, and the shelf is blank. It's bare. And I said, what is going on? So now I'm on a mission. Now I'm on a mission. I said to myself, there is no way I can get to the bottom of this just by going to two Targets. So what do I do? Which is silly because gas is very much expensive in Pennsylvania. It's like almost $4 a gallon, by the way, which is ridiculous, but whatever. I decided to go to every Target in a 50-mile radius of my house, which is about six or seven of them, luckily. So I said to myself, I, I said, I got to get a good sample size. I got to get an idea of what is going on here. And every Target, except one, one in my area, has taken every single sports card off the shelf and shrunk the aisle significantly. Let's talk about it. Why is this happening? Well, to put it bluntly, nobody's buying retail sports cards. At least in my area. Now, your targets might not see this change, but if you're an area like mine where sports cards are on the shelf 24-7, uh, 365 days of the year, and nobody's buying them, um, you know, this is what's going to happen, right? So if your target has a pretty filled section, chances are this is going to happen to your target as well, if not already. So yeah, the conclusion I came up with today 
um, after seeing this monumental uh, information in front of my eyes, is that it looks like, it looks like, from my guess, Target is going to be redistributing sports cards. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, let's use Pittsburgh for an example, because there's a Pittsburgh Target that is very, very popular and my friends go to on a constant basis. And believe it or not, you would not even be surprised when I say this. There are lines waiting for vendors at this one Target in Pittsburgh that I'm referring to, which is actually pretty incredible to me, considering the fact like right now there is like literally nothing that's like pretty valuable. Now, I'm sure when Prism football and basketball and whatever else comes out, Sure, there will be lines because people like to scalp and things like that, whatever, right? But for this instance, I was really, really shocked to to hear that, you know, it's what what they're doing is they're taking all the sports cards off the shelves at these Walmarts and Targets. I mean, Walmart's just the same. I documented this pretty well last year. Um, last year, my Walmart sports card aisle was like about five to seven feet long and now is reduced to like one or two feet. So like I said earlier in the video, so we're seeing the same thing happening right now at Walmarts and targets like mine targets that, you know, don't sell sports cards to the extent maybe of which they would like. They're taking those off the shelf in stores like mine and putting them in big area targets like a Pittsburgh or a New York City or like a Miami, downtown Miami or, you know, Houston or, or whatever. If there's a big city target, chances are those cards that were wiped off my shelves are going to targets like that. Which, in the grand scheme of things, is it's smart. It's smart. Because why keep them collecting space in my target when they're not going to sell, and put them in a big city target where you know they're going to sell because there's a higher demand and there's more population that goes to those targets and Walmarts because we're talking, I mean, they're, these companies both do the same thing, right? So it's smart. The idea of moving sports cards store to store to sell based off of demand in areas is smart. Very smart. So that way, vendors don't have to constantly stock, you know, big city targets because, you know, obviously, typically, vendors only stock, like, once a week, if that. Sometimes, once every other week, as a matter of fact, um, in recent months and over the course of maybe the last year. Um, that's another video I do want to make, that vending and, and restocks in my area have been pretty piss poor, if I'm going to be honest. Especially, especially at my Walmart. My Walmart has been abysmal. With a freaking exclamation point at the end of that. Bad. Bad. So that's why low-key, a little off topic here, but when holiday, when, when 2024 Tops Holiday makes its way into stores sometime in October or November... Um, because, of course, I did talk about that yesterday. A holiday is slated to go on pre-order on Walmart in around September or, like, early October. So stay tuned for that. We'll have more information for you there. Um, but I really do fear when a set like Bowman Platinum or a set like Holiday come out and it's Walmart exclusive, I am not going to find it. Because every Walmart in my area is really, really, really... Not that good at vending. I don't know the reason why. Of course, we did document some Walmarts are receiving vendor company changes. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still rolling out as we speak right now. Um, so it's all up in the air, really. Um, it's pretty pretty sad. Um, but to wrap this video up, really, um, at the end of the day, you know, Target is is covering their ass pretty much. That's basically the best way I could put it. Um, you know. If I was in charge of, you know, distribution of these kind of things, would I make the same change as whoever's making these changes? Realistically, probably yes. Probably yes. It's a smart move. I'm not going to say it's not. It's sad to see 
sports cards fizzle out in my area, but the reality of the situation is this, right? Here's the reality of the situation. Sports cards are not selling at retail stores in my area. On the other hand, hobby stores in my area are doing pretty good. My hobby stores, there's two of them, uh, technically three. I don't really go to the one because it's so far out of the way, but uh, my home base hobby store um, is like really good. He's really thriving. Um, but like Walmarts and Targets around here, you can pretty much like, for example, uh, my one home base Target, um, which is not even my home base Target because it's really like 20 minutes away. So that's the closest Target to me. Um, Chrome, I was just there today. 2024 Tops Chrome is still sitting there after like a week and a half. So clearly a set like Chrome, although price increase definitely has a reason behind that. Just it's not selling. Now in your area, cards might sell well, and that's, that's fine and dandy. But for mine, who I live in a small area where, you know, sports cards in my area is really kind of poverty level, to be honest. I mean, I'm just saying it how it is. Um, you know, people don't have money for cards when prices are through the roof of like bread, milk, eggs, gas, bills, whatever, you know. So that's kind of what we are seeing today in the economy and like the sports card market and things like that. Um, so honestly, at the end of the day, I, I really don't blame the distribution. Whoever whoever handles the distribution, I forget the company name of Target's vendor, but honestly, I don't blame them. I don't blame them uh, blame them at all. Um, it gets more product out to big city or high populated Targets, and there's a smaller stock in my area for cards. But again, that's just how it is. It's sad to see that happen because obviously, just a couple years ago, just a couple years ago. Um, sports cards were thriving in every Target and Walmart and card store in America. And obviously that is not the case anymore. So hopefully we get back to that. But Target, or not Target, Tops, Fanatics are definitely to blame for some of this. Um, So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But either way, guys, that's all I got for you. That is all I got for you in the video today. So before we get into a pack of overpriced Chrome... Let me tell you about today's sponsor of the video. So this video today is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the official ticket market of Major League Baseball. And we have partnered up to deliver huge savings for you guys who watch my videos. So click the link down below and download the app today. Use my promo code GRIP and RIP. That's promo code GRIP and RIP. All one word. To save $20 off of your First purchase. Again, first purchase. So big thank you to SeatGeek for becoming the official sponsor of the channel. Absolutely love what they do over there. They've been really kind to me, so I love what they do over there. So go give them some support and go have fun at a baseball game or wherever else you want to go. So, all right, let's see what we get here. I'm not really expecting much, to be honest. If I'm going to be completely honest, not really expecting much. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. So let's see. Um, eh, just not good, man. We, well, you know, we'll do one more pack. We'll do one more pack. I think I have room to do one more pack. I think. Let me count them real quick. We're down into the single digits. I know that for a fact. So let me see. Today's the 31st, but by the way, tomorrow's August, so... Thank you for a great July, by the way, on the video. So let's see. August 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. So yeah, I can do, I believe, one more pack. And I dropped one, so I'm going to pick that one up so I don't step on it. So, all right, here we go. Here we go. Let's see. We'll do one more, and that'll be the end of it. We only pulled one, actually, well, technically two. We only pulled two parallels in this entire box. The Juan Soto Blue in our autograph, which was purple. So with the parallels, we have not pulled, like, e even like, you know, that's, that's pretty cool right there. Summertime at the park, Jackson Holiday, who actually just got called back up today, actually, as a matter of fact. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, but even with like the rookies, I was just saying, we really haven't pulled many good rookies. Like we haven't pulled Holiday's base. Um, we did pull Langford. Uh, we did pull Trio. We did not pull Merrill. Um, we didn't pull Holiday base. Skeens or not Skeens. Um, Jared Jones. We did not pull a Jared Jones base. Although I did buy his card on eBay, so I mean that's really not that big of a deal. But um, yeah, I mean that's a pretty cool card. That's a pretty cool insert. So I really can't complain about that. But again. The color parallels have not been producing. So I'm not entirely sure my box is just terrible or whatever. But yeah, um, we definitely have to up the production. Because two parallels, which, I mean, for $200 a box, that's just not going to cut it. That is just not going to cut it at all. Again, thank shitty Breakers Delight Scam. Because that's obviously what is happening. Now, if Breakers Delight Scam didn't exist, my box would have probably had at least maybe three or four parallels, but we'll see. We still have a couple packs left to go. Don't give up faith yet. We could maybe pull something else. So let's see. Um, so either way, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.